Do not buy this game. Imagine Cuphead, but you're a magician instead. What could possibly go wrong? Our journey begins with two wizards stumbling upon a book while cleaning. They cast a spell from it, opening up an enchanted portal as the title suggests. Our heroes alongside their cat get sucked in, beginning our adventure with the mysterious book tailing behind. That's the plot. I possess three different spells, red fire, blue ice, and green magic. Most enemies have a glowing color behind them indicating which spell they must be defeated with. Aside from these ghost wolf heads, all there is to do in this level is kill bats and walk. It feels so lifeless and the sounds just show how cheaply made this was. That's it? I'm already bored playing this game and regret my purchase. After that repetitiveness, I enter the nearby hotel, and to clarify, I am not editing any of these transitions. This is literally how the game is telling its story. That night actually looks kind of cool, and that's where my praise ends. I was foolish to think the levels could get any better. Here comes the bad guys constantly on repeat. <laughs> Thank goodness an elevator is in sight. Up we go and the new creatures here are color-coded spiders. If you stand directly underneath them, they cannot land any web shots on you. You not having fun? No, yeah, me neither. And cutscene. I mean PowerPoint presentation into the first boss battle against a witch. <gasps> Could it be? A unique obstacle I need to carefully avoid while I take down the boss? Nope, not at all. If you camp in the left corner of the screen, the tombstones will never reach you, and all you have to do is hop over the incoming cats. And again, to top it off, the music is lackluster. That concludes the first phase of this match, transforming both the witch and I into scrawny versions of ourselves. No explanation is provided, and nothing related to gameplay is different as far as I can tell. While stirring her cauldron, green and red bubbles emerge. I experimented to see if they did anything worthwhile, but they were just simple hazards. Oh, and I forgot to mention how slippery the controls feel in this game combined with input delay. Anyways, I re-challenged the sorceress, camped in the corner, and this time maneuvered above the bubbles by double jumping followed with a dash. She then falls into her pot and initiates the third phase. You'll never guess the strategy for this. Oh wait, it's just a repeat of the last phase. Double jumps followed by dashing. And that's not the best part. Check out the dying animation. <laughs> Whoa, incredible. Now that was art. That was smut. The cauldron proceeds to explode. The witch melts down to her grave. We return to our original forms. But wait, aliens? We're being abducted by aliens. Whoosh. All right, time to escape. And I'm already stuck. A solid minute later, I suddenly remembered that a melee attack exists in this game used only for destroying obstacles. Why not combat? They gave Samus a melee counter in the Metroid games, and it was sick. Oh well, back to the reality of derivative stage hazards. We got ceiling crawling robotic caterpillars with downpouring blasters, caged monsters that slap ya. By the way, that smacking sound alone makes me feel like I bought a bootlegged version of Cuphead. Things finally change up. Instead of walking on flat ground, a series of platforming awaits me with little green aliens piloting robot suits and whoa 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 the dash in the air is slippery too oh my gosh the controls in this game irk me almost dead i barely made it to the end alive where a computer digitizes my partner and i this is where the game cranks it up a notch in being annoying you see there are these alien police that ride hover bikes what's wrong with that you may ask well first of all the game won't let me backtrack to retrieve this gosh dang heart to heal myself Second, they never stop showing up, no matter how many you kill. They just come back a few seconds later. I find difficulty, if done right, to be great game design and a fun challenge. But this? This is just clogging up the screen and is hard just for the sake of being hard. It's taking me forever to inch my way through this level because I have to take these guys out before moving on if I want any chance of surviving. Everyone! Get in here! And even when I do find the openings to proceed forward, I get stuck. I can't move. I press every button known to mankind, but nothing's working. I'm a sitting duck. Only one method would free me from those chains. And that was pausing, then unpausing. <sighs> At least I now see the light at the end of the tunnel. My partner and I return to the real world inside the UFO. 
watch the magic book flee from the scene, which I'm still confused about. Then the game tells me, oh, you thought that was weird? How about a cow controlling the spacecraft? Honestly, that makes the most sense so far, considering cattle and their history with aliens. Look at this cow, though, jamming away at every button they can put their hooves on. It's like a milk tank is button mashing while playing Street Fighter. The dangers here include mini alien ships, falling anvils, and robotic hands chucking bowling balls. Oh no, why are you smiling? What are you up to? DJ Kelly! My character! They can't resist the beats of this subpar music. Backup dancers appear, and I cannot attack or jump while the cow is DJing. All I can do is strafe side to side in hopes of not falling into any holes. It doesn't matter. We end up getting caught anyways, then are shrunk down to miniature size. We quickly summon our broomsticks, then begin the final phase of the boss. It starts off simple enough with the fire from the ray gun. More aliens and the cow transforming. I thought everything was going well and dandy, but remember, I'm not editing any of the sound here. All that's playing is music. There are no sound effects from any of the attacks. Thus, I died from a laser blast that I had no idea was coming. Again, I am okay with difficulty, but not when it doesn't feel like my fault. Take this Cuphead boss, for example. You can literally hear and see everything coming your way. It's difficult, but over time, you can figure out how to manage it. Gosh, I miss Cuphead. Anywho, I blow through the first phase, dance again, and rematch the cow cyborg by staying high this time. This spot just above the center is perfect for avoiding most most of the onslaught of lasers. Defeated, the livestock fires at us with one more attempt, but damages their ship in the process. Crash landing us to the surface? They didn't show the crash at all. Why the freak am I expecting anything at this point? Oh look, spinning monkey PNGs. I paid $20 for this. At least one carrying a wooden bazooka looks better. Excuse me? I get the devs don't want me to go past this point until the chimp is gone, but put up a visual barrier or something. This crocodile section is looking pretty good though, and they're not messing around. Reminds me of that nostalgic whack a croc arcade game. Nothing to see here, just some disappearing monkey PNGs. More gators. And look at all these mosquitoes on screen at the same time. What was I supposed to do? Now check this out. Same exact section, yet nowhere near the same amount of mosquitoes as shown earlier. Why is this game random in that way? Okay, ancient temple time and stellar transition like always. Spikes in the ground, check. Snakes, check. Booby trap spears, check. Rinse and repeat throughout the whole level, and that's all, folks. I still have no clue what this spellbook's ambition is. It breaks a pink jewel, which I'm guessing is important, because now they have a reason to reference the Indiana Jones boulder scene, which, to be fair, I'm guilty of as well. Now, I want to stop the video to give you a moment to guess what the boss of this temple is going to be. A mummy? An archaeologist, perhaps? Maybe a temple guardian monster? No. It's a hermit crab on the beach. This has got to be the most out of place boss battle I've witnessed in my entire life. Yes, I know we jumped through a portal, but eh, this feels so forced. Whatever, I got to focus on the game now. And what I mean by focusing is finding the spot that allows me to cheese the boss easily. Standing right in front of the crab enables me to evade the diving fish by simply standing in place. Jumping takes care of the rest, and if needed, I can block. That's right. You can block. Great addition to add your own spin on the genre. But unfortunately, after performing a block, there's a second afterwards that leaves you defenseless before being able to move again. Well, that sucks. One of the fishes is unable to leave their cannon, causing an explosion, sending us into the depths of the ocean where we shapeshift into mermaids, then meet an octopus with a monocle and a mustache. Oh no, whatever will I do? Yet another easy cop out. What the? I can't dodge that spring! It gets worse. I die from an invisible hitbox. Look, it didn't even touch me, and I got a game over from it. The sad part is, I'm not even surprised that happened. So I defeated the crab again, then faced the mollusk once more. Everywhere I go, I see his face. That stupid homing spring! Come on, Andrew, just make it to the end. And I'm still not done yet. The hermit crab's ghost is back for revenge with the ship on its back. Thank goodness none of the extended invisible hitbox shenanigans knocked me out during this phase. And with that, our chase after the book continues. Hold on, now we're being held prisoner by the book? I am really trying with this game, but I'm not sure how much longer I can last.
Oh, splendid. Every time I shoot, my character also dashes against my will. I am only pressing the shoot button. In order to fix this, I quit the game, rebooted it, and I'm still dashing when I shoot. <sighs> I guess I have no choice but to beat the rest of the game like this. It is so frustrating though. I can't change my muscle memory. Thankfully, each frog knight is dropping a heart. I'm 50% of the way there. I can do this. I freaking hate this game. Okay, maybe I'll just never shoot. Yeah, that can work. I'm doing it now, aren't I? I can do this. I... <laughs> I am going to break everything within a five foot radius of me. <laughs> I don't want to play this game anymore. Okay, new plan. I'm just going to pick the color blue, then press and hang on to the shoot button for dear life and only kill the blue enemies in my way. <gasps> I, I made it. I freaking made it with full health too. All right, down the trap door we go into the mines. Falling icicles and hairy toads that can be killed by any color, I got this. It's doable. A bigger toad that can spit up bees? That's not too bad, that's not too bad. Traversing lava, again, not too bad. But gets more difficult when the toad bear shows up with the bees. Now to shoot him down, no, the freaking dash! This game is unplayable. I better call IT. Hello, IT help desk. Hi, my copy of Enchanted Portals has the shoot and dash as the same button, even though they're not mapped that way. Have you tried unassigning then assigning the commands? What in the world is that going to do? I can't believe it actually worked. Isn't that how it always goes when you call IT? With the training weights off, I felt like I was playing on baby mode now. No enemies could stand in my way. I even powered through it, not caring about getting damage because I was so confident I'd make it to the end, which I did. I'm then treated to a princess and the frog boss. I wonder how long it's going to take me to cheese this one. Not long at all. I simply stand on the right lily pad, proceed to cast spells at the princess. The falling prince toads never come close close to making contact with me, I hop over the frog coming from behind me, then dash back to the right lily pad right when the red vial is dropped. Sick of my antics, the princess lets a frog kiss her, transforming herself into one of the amphibians alongside them. There's a lot more going on in this phase that keeps me on my toes. The princess attacks with her tongue. More vials are being dropped. Lily pads are being removed. It's a lot to keep an eye out for at once. Upon retrying, I was able to get past this part. However, I was in the red going into the next one. The royal frog splashes into the pond, assigns a catapult mechanic in her place while she blows kisses from the waters. But the fairy frog that is catapulted gets the best of me. What makes this tough is the princess is only an open target when she decides to pop up for a visit. It took a good amount of luck and about four attempts, but I was finally able to dethrone that entitled brat. So where does the next portal take us? To the wild, wild west. There's not even a run and gun section. We go straight into the next boss fight. This bout is where I learned I needed to change a couple of my tactics. The first being my choice of spell. Whenever opponents didn't have a color aura behind them, I'd always default to the green magic since it had the best area of effect. As you can see here though, its damage output is less than the other spells causing battles to last longer resulting in me having to survive in bullet hells for what seemed like forever. The second issue was me never powering up. That's right, over time the meter will fill up in the form of a circle, signaling your character is ready to power up. Y'all ready to see this transformation? Nothing happened. Uh, are you blind? Or do I have to zoom for you to see it? No, I'm with you. It's dumb. But switching to fire and using the power meter is my only shot of beating these cowboys. Not to mention, this boss encounter took me the longest to beat out of any of them. The buffalo would come back to the fray with a gatling gun that fired cactus spurting out needles which added to the chaos and overwhelmed me to my demise. Over 30 minutes later, I finally pulled off an attempt where I squeezed past the projectiles with just enough health remaining to secure the win. Man, was I happy to see that portal, which took us to a garbage alley within an unknown city. I may be in a new location, but it looks like the chickens run this part of town too. Or should I say, the mob and their sub-machine guns firing from the windows and doing drive-by shootings. 
and pizza. Because, well, I don't know. Maybe an homage to the Ninja Turtles? I gotta stop trying to make this game make any sense to me. Anyways, I strolled down the street in a cautious manner, slipped up a few times getting myself caught in the messy middle of the onslaught of things, yet still pulled it off in the end by the skin of my teeth. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you Chicken Johnny Bravo. Man, I'm pretty. Watch out for that blow dart. Actually, that may be the only dart I'll ever have to avoid, because apparently standing off to the side doesn't trigger either of Johnny's chicken sidekicks to even attempt taking a shot at me. This has got to be the easiest boss by far, all thanks to poor programming. I power up, unleash my wrath of fireballs on the foul knight, evade the emerging spikes by double jumping, dashing, then for some reason getting another jump after all of that, and begin his final phase. <laughs> What? I'm dead? How? Fine. You want to be like that? I'm just going to camp again, triple jump all I want, and this time not die during the phase transition for reasons I cannot explain. Johnny Chicken devolves into a caveman with a big stick and dinosaurs flood the screen. I managed to beat it on my first try, watch the rooster fall into the fountain of time, reverts back to an egg, then on the other side of the portal, a familiar piano tune fills my ears. Could it be? Ludwig van Beethoven himself? Well, supposedly he was a jerk in real life, so I guess the villainy checks out. Great music though. As you'd expect, musical notes in different shapes and sizes are the basis of his attacks. Our duel is a quick one, tying up his fingers somehow, giving us the opportunity to chase after the book. And now we're in someone's front yard. No cutscene or PowerPoint presentation to introduce us to the Chihuahua here. It gets even better. Watch this. <laughs> I, I, anything I say about that is probably something I've already said before in this video. Oh no. The unavoidable spring from the octopus boss is back in the form of lightning? There is good news. That's the only time it happens because this fight with Cerberus is really short. It didn't even last 30 seconds. I'm just going to be grateful, though, because I've finally made it to the final boss. And it looks like it's going to be a toughie. Obstacles are spewing all over the place. The book is changing colors. This is going to take a long time to master, especially since after you die, you have to face Beethoven, Cerberus, and the stupid lightning. Then you can challenge the book again with whatever remaining life you have after all of that, is what I would say if this game wasn't designed so badly. Look at this. The final boss battle, yet none of the obstacles can reach me aside from the occasional cat, all because I'm standing off to the side. You know what? We take those. The screen then shatters, transforming me into a squirrel? A squirrel taking on a tree. Sure. Was it hard? No, not at all. The glass screen shatters again. I've returned to human form, but look different. This young wizard girl is my next mortal enemy, who uses her wand to summon others to attack in her stead. When it turns the color red, a fairy holding a candle blows flames at me. When green, a second fairy wielding a fan blows green swirls. And when blue, a third fairy rides across the screen with her crystal reindeer and sleigh. It didn't take long for me to lose, but that first attempt was all I needed to learn their ways. Honestly, the hardest thing about this boss gauntlet is the random amount of times you get struck by lightning. <laughs> Seriously, four times in one go. Thankfully, our dear cat from the beginning of the story drops hearts to make up for that horrendous RNG. I burn down the tree once more with ease, then gracefully dance my way around everything the four magical girlies could throw at me. I was unstoppable. I was double jumping. I was dashing midair. I was triple jumping. I kept the fire coming. And the book's mischievous ways were put to an end. We surrounded it, beat it to a pulp with our wands, took it back home right before the head wizard got back. Hang on, who is this guy? Why are we just now being introduced to him? And oh no, an end credit scene? These people think they're going to make a sequel over my dead body. Go follow my Instagram instead to learn how you can win these Cuphead U2s that I'm giving away for free. And please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel in return for me having to deal with this mess. You all have a good one. Thanks.